Hey guys, it's Vince. I wanted to cover a package that I've been working on for quite some time. Um, I think it's more out of necessity that this has been developed because I get tons of questions on setups for motors, what's required with motors to get their chassis and control and motivated. Um, this takes away all the guesswork. I can configure this design in basically anything you need to support whatever you're trying to build. The big thing here is simplicity and support. Um, before I cover anything guys, one thing that, that I need to mention and anybody who's dealt with me will tell you is I support what I sell and I'm really proud of that in the sense that if you message me a question I can usually answer it within probably six to eight hours. Um, and usually I'm pretty good with that as far as if, as long as it's on the eastern time and you know it's not three o'clock in the morning I'm usually right there. I mean uh, this is what I live and breathe so if you guys have a question I do my best to support it. Um, any of the products I sell I do my best to support and I want you guys to have peace of mind with that. Your money is hard earned and um, as well as mine and my time is so I feel that the least I can do is give you guys that, that end user support you need to get your systems working at the best of our ability. Um, that being said, I'm going to start covering the components and why this package came together. Um, first thing Solderless connectors. Solderless connectors have been around for about now two years. Um, they're exceptional. I mean, they really make hooking the motor cable to the motor up a really simple process. And more or less, it's just a male DB9 broken out to a six point terminal block. You've got four leads for your motors and two leads that go to the resistors. The two white leads go to the resistor. Um, Resistors are, of course, included with this package, and with any Gecko package, resistors basically let the motors reduce, get the current reduced down to 70% when the Gecko is at idle. Um, everybody knows this, or everybody has read something on this. Guys, if you have motors and you're letting them run without resistors, you're generating excess heat that is not required. So before you start off on the wrong foot, I recommend resistors as not being so much an accessory, but more as a necessity. And again, it's simple common sense. Why have the motors generate heat when there's nothing going on with the system? If the system's idle, your motors should be at idle as well. And that reduces that current enough to where the motors aren't burning themselves up. It just kind of keeps them nice. So let's go on to the next component. You got your DB9s. DB9, you've got your male and you've got your female. The DB9 male and female are very simple. Um, again, you do have to be comfortable with the soldering. You can see the connectors are quite small. Um, if you've never soldered, again, I would recommend probably a, a package with assembled cables to make the process much more easier for you as far as assembling. But other than that, I mean, even if you've never soldered, I'll be honest, you can learn to solder. It's not impossible. It's, it's more a question of detail. If you're willing to, to learn the details and learn that skill, this package, again, will definitely suit your needs. So again, if you buy three axis, which three motors, of course, would come with three axis, you're going to get six terminals, six DB9 terminals. So basically you're going to get uh, three male, three female. If you go four axis, you're going to get eight to support. You need two per motor because you're going to make one on each end of the cable. The male goes into the G540 and the female goes into your DB9 on your solderless connector. Um, the next component that's included is our 18-4 solderless shielded cable. Um, guys, the 18.4, I think, is, or at least from what I've seen, it's the heaviest duty cable you'll find available for motor hookups. Um, again, it'll support any stepper. It's all copper leads. It's foil shielded to protect from noise. Um, you do have a copper drain, very high quality cable and super flexible. You'll never need more than that. That's overkill. Um, again, very simple. It's included. You get 10 foot per motor. So if you get three axes, you're going to get 30 feet. If you get four axes, 40 feet, and so forth. Uh, 10 feet for each motor cable, I think, is more than sufficient. Once again, I can customize it to your requirements. So if you want to go longer, we can go longer. Um, next component, DB9 hoods. Oops, sorry. DB9 hoods. All the DB9s are, are basically bare connectors without the hoods and the, the actual assembly for it comes with all the screws and nuts to assemble it. That's what gives you these connectors and makes them look like this. You just have to screw that together. It's not a very tough process. It's more of a tedious process. If you're comfortable with soldering, you should have no problem doing that. Um, again, resistors are covered. Um, these are all matched to the motors so that you're good to go. 3.3K, you're, you're basically set to go with these. You don't have to guess. These, Each one of these, you get one that goes and connects 
to each white terminal on the solderless connector. You just bend this and bend that and make a U and connect it there and you're set to go. Um, the next, probably the most important part, is you're going to get solderless connector instructions. These instructions are written to include connecting this system to a G540 or to your own controller. Even though you don't have a G540, you can still use DB9 connectors on the controller end to make it simple to hook up and as well as going with uh, wiring everything. Um, the big thing here is is just understanding the polarities of your cabling on your motors because as most guys know the terminals on, on stepper motors are just bare so you have a choice you can either solder or go with the solderless connectors. I don't like soldering if I don't have to because if I ever want to change something I can change it on the fly. That was the whole design around the solderless connectors. I didn't want, I wanted to keep it simple for the end user. Um, one of the big things with our tables guys is that anything you deal with motion control you want to be able to adjust. There's going to be a lot of times you'll run into instances where nothing should be permanent in the sense that if I need to make a minor adjustment or I need to change a motor or I need to change a connector it should be as quick and as painless as possible especially if there's money in, at stake here if you guys are generating money with your equipment the last thing you want is long downtime you want to be up and running and do it basically as streamlined as possible I try to keep it as close to a NASCAR pit crew as possible with these designs so that's more or less where this package came from another um, Another set of instructions before I forget, I give you just a general polarity instruction for the motors. This way you know exactly where these terminals go and you can go through and if you did want to use, like I said, another connector or ba basically these are included if you just order the motors by themselves, but I wanted to include it in this package as well just so you have it as cross-reference and you're good. Um, this, these motors right here are the 600 ounce that I offer and then this one over here is the 300 ounce okay you can see both of them have the dual shaft okay dual quarter inch shaft they both have the flats on them so you're set on the shaft and again I get a lot of messages on settings for motors there is no way I can give you exact settings for your table because there are way too many variables if you are reading exact settings that should be a manufacturer you bought with the actual motors attached to the table that will give you a ballpark it still is not an exact science because again how can they give you settings if they don't see exactly what the table is doing you can manufacture you can have two of the two or three of the same table side by side and the performances be totally different um, again it's a ballpark there is no exact setting it's end user reference as far as finding that sweet spot of what you're actually running um, uh, as far as everything else goes, like I said, everything in this package is designed for simplicity. Um, the motors perform superbly. Um, everything here I actually support, so you guys don't have a question as far as that. Um, I'm not a huge company, so you guys mean more to me, I feel, than the guys with the big companies, and I try to make that, every, actually put forth every effort to keep that as an understanding between us. Um, everything else... All being said, there's nothing like this in the market right now. I've seen a lot of packages with motors. Typically, you just get the steppers. You might get motor cables and steppers. I wanted to develop a do-it-yourself system that would encompass basically anybody on the market looking to get into motion control who feels comfortable soldering or who wants to attempt it and do it with the least amount of hassle possible. This package eliminates that. It eliminates all of the guesswork as far as what do I need, how do I buy it, why do I buy it, um, can I make this? Can I make that? The engineering's there. I mean, you, you're going to basically have connectors to hook your motors up so that if you ever need to disconnect something, you can disconnect it at the chassis. You can then disconnect your motor cables. Um, most guys just make it to where it's one assembly. Again, I like to make it to where it's end user manipulated because anything that comes up, you guys are ready to tackle and it makes it a lot, lot simpler to, um, do any type of, uh, preventative maintenance on the system as well. So, that being said, I basically covered everything. If you guys have any questions other than this, um, please message me. But I think you get the gist now of what we're what we're looking at here. And then this way, as you guys go and assemble your system, it makes it a much more painless, streamlined process. And at least watching the video, you have an understanding. Even if you don't choose this package, you know now what you need. And you can do the math and figure out the pricing strategies that are out there and see what makes sense and what doesn't. Um, 
for general purpose, I, I, one more thing I just don't want to forget. For general purpose, these are 600 ounce, like I said, and those are 300 ounce. I get lots of questions on the torque related to your table. Um, that's another thing that, depending on the weight of the chassis, depending, there's so many variables there. Odds are 300 ounce will cover most medium tables. 600 ounce will easily cover most larger scale machines. I mean, we're talking a lot of power. A lot of guys like to go with 600 ounce on their spindle because the spindle, again, is the he one of the heaviest items, and then go 300 ounce on the chassis for just general axis movement. That makes a lot of sense as well. Um, 2.2 kilowatt spindles, actually the uh, a 600 ounce on that would be fine. 1.5 kilowatt, that makes sense as well. It's more a question of what you're looking at doing, but the idea is, guys, less is more, meaning, you know, you don't want to overbuy what you don't need, but by the same token, if, if it's a question of developing too much torque to help support the table at running less, sometimes that's a better option. You know, if you got a spindle that's really heavy and you're questioning whether you should go with which motor, always go the larger if it's in question. Um, and I'm not saying that to upsell. I'm saying that because it's logic. I mean, if you have a motor that you're questioning, oh, I don't know, you know, will one motor run a tandem axis in the sense of I know it needs this, but I'm, I'm going to go with this because my budget doesn't allow it, you're better off waiting, taking the time, do it right. You're not building this machine as a sense of a toy. You're building it for precision. I mean, there's no point in having this kind of equipment if you're building it in the sense that it's more, you know, I'm just going to throw something together and see movement. I mean, there's tons of videos on YouTube with that, but there's nothing in the sense of why we do things. And when machinists do build these type of units, they're not looking at speed without accuracy. If your table doesn't have the accuracy, speed means nothing. Rapid movements mean nothing. Um, they they have their place, but everything in a nutshell should always come to accuracy. So just keep that in mind when you're putting your package together. And that's what I wanted to do with this. Um, once again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, I will be making some more videos, so stay tuned, and uh, we'll see what we can cover together. Take care.